Stranger is a relatively modern 2007 anime film directed by Masaru Endo and produced by Studio Bones. It is a samurai drama based in the Senguru era or Warning States period and is essentially part coming of Age Tale and part tale of a lost soul finding itself. The story itself is relatively simplistic in nature but it makes it up with wonderful characters, an interesting plot, and some brilliant fight sequences. The film follows Kotaro, a young boy who is being hunted down by a group of Ming soldiers from China for mysterious and very strange reasons. Among the soldiers, there's a very strong, fearsome Western fighter named Lu Lang, who is only desires to find a worthy opponent. Due to various circumstances, Kotaro and his pet dog, Tubimaru, meet Nanashi, a nameless Rowan, and Nanashi literally means nameless, and he is also haunted by his visions of his past which led him to avoid drawing his sword ever again. Throughout the film, the circumstances surrounding the two unlikely companions gradually led to a startling and spectacular finale. I did find that the plot was a little too simplistic in places, and occasionally it did seem that it was simply adding filler to connect action sequences. There was also an element of ludicrous to the plot once I found that the main soldier's plan, and the reason for chasing Kotaro did seem a bit arbitrary. However, this did not spoil my enjoyment for the film while I was watching it. This story, as I said, is quite simple in nature, effectively about one nameless samurai's struggle with his past and the potential of finding it with the help of Kotaro and Tobimaru. There are, however, far more to this story. It is a coming-of-age tale for Kotaro, who must learn that he cannot act spoiled all the time by fending for himself and learn to live in this era. More importantly, however, it is a story about Nanashi's struggle with his demons and his quest for what you can essentially call spiritual fulfillment. As the story unfolds, we gradually learn about Nanashi and, of course, Kotaro's separate pasts. Although not everything, in fact, I like this element. We learn enough about the story and then there are other mysteries and aspects of their respective past lives that are left out. I would have liked a little bit more character development to add more to the characters, however, I feel that there was done enough to make them more than just two-dimensional and give them personality. The characters in The Strangers have a few distinctions. Simply describing the two main characters as lone wolves, one an impatient child and the other a reluctant, careless ronin, covers most of the complexity you'll see and their personalities. From this description, you can probably also guess that the two characters eventually bond and bring out the virtues within one another. The child learns to be more apologetic and appreciative, while the ronin finds himself in more self-sacrifice. The rest of the cast is equally simple, only the exact opposite of the two protagonists. They're not malice embodied like traditional Disney villains, but they all do demonstrate the darker side of humanity, cowardless, ambition, bloodthirst, greed, and several other character flaws. The heroism and purity of the protagonists are highlighted nicely next to the backdrop of immortality in the rest of the cast. The film is a virtual masterpiece. The hand-drawn characters blend in well with the background with also accurate detail right down to the smallest rock. This setup soon works wonders during the action scenes, which are indeed the film's best assets. The last half an hour contains non-stop action with people being sliced and diced before concluding one of the most jaw-dropping one-on-one fight scenes I've ever seen in anime. The animation during the action scenes flows smoothly and the camera work impressively captures the mood with appropriate zooms and pans. The voice actors do a fine job, with Nagashi Tomoya and Chini Yuri doing a wonderful job while playing Nanashi and Turu, respectively. There is a fine amount of Chinese spoken in the film, although it occasionally sounds a little bit forced, I honestly think it was well handled, and it didn't seem a little too out of place. The music proudly consists of powerful orchestra pieces typical of epics. Each present leather drum beats or flute solos give the soundtrack a distinct Asian flavor appropriate for the setting. The full onslaught of orchestra of strings or bearing leather drum beats are played against the action scenes, while the uncompanioned flute solos match well with the more tender segments. Despite the range of emotion of the different tracks and body, the Asian Maltov keeps the soundtrack cohesive as if each track was part of a large, singular piece of music. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. I wouldn't call it a masterpiece since there are certain elements that don't quite work so well. The plot, while having an interesting level of complexity, if you look at the samurai, it is a very simplistic in nature, with the class of unintentional hero. However, I think it is adequate and well enough told so you don't really notice these issues. This anime doesn't necessarily challenge you in the way, say, a Spirit Away of the Howl's Moving Cattle do, a very good Manazaki film, by the way. However, I feel that there is enough here to show a very good story. I like the main characters a lot, actually. They have some really interesting backstories, and in the end, it seems to be a story of two unlikely companions learning to live with themselves no matter what their pasts were. Sword of the Stranger really shows what Studio Bones can do if they put their mind into it. 
essentially for all its faults, this film really draws you in and the conclusion will surely excite anyone who likes a visually stunning, well-told samurai drama. It may not be a masterpiece, but it kept me griped right the way through to the end, which for me is a good sign of a good film. Definitely recommended. So with this anime, it deserves an overall score of 9.06 out of 10, which makes this one of my highest scored anime reviews thus far. If you like sword fights, strong male leads, feeling many emotions, and great art, definitely check this out. It's a little gory at times, so if you're a little squeamish, this may be something you want to give a pass. All in all, this anime film does almost everything right, and I would highly recommend this to anyone. If I had to pick one movie to showcase someone to get them into anime, it'd be either this, Heroin, Kenjin, OVA, or Perfect Blue would likely be it. This film has a lot of rewatch value, so watching it once or twice will simply not quench your appetite as it did for me. Anyways, this wraps up my first ever anime film review of Sword of the Strangers. If you guys did enjoy this, of course hit that like button, it's always widely appreciated as well. Comment down below, give me your thoughts, opinions of this anime film, as well leave your suggestions of other animes you guys would like me to explore upon and review. My name is JC Green, and I'll see you guys next time on my next anime-related video. Peace, guys.